What's up guys, Five Star Paintball Tech here and welcome to part two of the Boiler Room Sessions. Um, we're gonna go over the Torpedo Regulator uh, made by Bob Long. It comes on pretty much uh, every uh, Intimidator Gen 1 through uh, Gen 5. What's up guys, Five Star Paintball Tech here. Um, welcome back to the Boiler Room. This is part two of uh, tonight's series for the regulators. Um, today we're gonna go over the uh, Torpedo High Pressure Regulator made by Bob Long. Um, these started coming stock on the Intimidators uh, Gen 2 through Gen 4 um, in this uh, uh, style. They, they actually came in a few different uh, body shapes, but they all take the same exact internals. Um, they all break down the same way and work the, the uh, same way. So we're just gonna kind of walk through uh, the ins and outs of it. A um, few uh, just kind of, um, I guess, high level things for, for the regulator. Um, to adjust it, turning a 316 uh, Allen key in this uh, adjuster right here will increase the pressure. Counterclockwise will decrease the pressure. Um, for any gun that you're going to put this onto, especially one that you just purchased or that just came out of your closet, you don't know how long it's been sitting for. These actually have very similar uh, internals as the uh, LPR does. So if that uh, reg seat on the inside's deteriorated, it's basically going to turn this into a gas through. So the first thing that I recommend doing uh, when you get a uh, older Intimidator is to just hook it up to a gauge, zero it out, and then reset it uh, using a uh, gauge for a uh, Gen 1 through uh, Gen uh, for Gen 1 and Gen 2 um, we're going to set these regulators to a starting pressure of about 230 psi that should get you to somewhere in the 260s to 270s uh, for velocity your LPR you're going to want to have set to about 80 psi um, and then from there you're just going to make adjustments to get it to hit 300 or whatever your field's limit is for a uh, Gen 3 Intimidator um, and a Gen 4 Intimidator, you're going to want the um, high pressure reg set to a starting pressure of about 200 PSI. On a Gen 3, that should get you velocity in the two, probably 260s to 270s. On a Gen 3, you'll or a Gen 4 rather, you'll probably be a little bit higher. Um, and again, for the uh, Gen 3 Intimidator, you'll want to run a uh, LPR pressure of 80. On a Gen 4, uh, you're going to run it a little bit lower, anywhere from 60 to 65 PSI. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going above 60 PSI because you risk blowing the poppet o-ring. So that's, uh, that's that. Um, one other tip and trick, whatever you want to call it, um, for a lot of these regs, if you just thread them into the front block, one really annoying thing is you don't know where your macro line uh, hole is going to end up. And if it's off to the side, it's going to be really uncomfortable to hold. So one little tip I got for you, depending on where the hole ends up uh, coming out, if it's uh, slightly uh, to the right of uh, center, uh, you could usually get away with a adding a 015 O-ring, uh, Buna 70 durometer to the base. So it's going to be right below the threads. And if you screw that in now, huzzah, your macro line can be easily centered and is now a lot comfier to hold. If your um, macro line hole ends up um, facing towards the front, uh, you could use a thicker O-ring like a 112. Um, and then if it's all the way off to the, it basically if it's uh, to the left off center, um, using a 113 O-ring will usually do the trick as well for, uh, for getting the regulator centered or the macro line hole uh, centered. So that's uh, one tip and trick. Uh, contrary to popular belief, there actually is an incorrect way to set up your macro line on this reg. You'll notice that there's two holes. There's one uh, right here where you can see the brass piston. Um, this is the correct hole for um, uh, for just putting your macro line into. And the reason for that is because this is your inlet hole. Then there's a second hole, which you'll see is plugged up by this grub screw. This is your output hole. So this is really meant for two things. One, a uh, plug like you're seeing right here, which makes it again really comfy to, or a, a bit comfier to hold. Um, the other option that you could put there is a uh, gauge. And um, I think the gauge is just like really uncomfortable to hold, which is why you don't see one on this uh, regulator. Uh, but you do have the option for that. If you were to put the macro line uh, fitting into where I have it plugged right here, um, 
this that's going to effectively and then plug the other hole um so putting the macro line um into this hole it's when you take this screw out it's just going to look like a uh, a black wall on the inside if you were to put the uh, macro line fitting into this hole um it's effectively going to turn this into a gas through sending straight tank pressure into the gun which you don't want so the only hole that you put the macro line into is the one where you could see the brass piston um and uh, as long as you do that, you can't mess it up. And don't be tempted to put it into the other hole just because it fits in a better place uh, that's comfier to hold in the hands. Uh, has to go into the hole with the brass fitting. Okay, that's my PSA for the night. Um, last thing that you're going to need in order to disassemble this thing is going to be a uh, needle nose plier and then a uh, small screwdriver or a bigger uh, flathead screwdriver. It has to be a flathead uh, to get the Schrader valve uh, out of there. Um, so that said, let's get this thing apart. It screws out into two pieces. Uh, and these are pretty simple to uh, maintain. Um, one thing that I like doing with this, you can use a screwdriver to get this out. Um, I also like using, I think it's a, a quarter inch, um, uh, what's it called? Like a nut, uh, driver. Um, yeah, a quarter inch, uh, nut here. Actually get up and, uh, I'll show you what. I'm talking about. So I use one of these uh, nut drivers. It comes in a nice set with standard and metric. And I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's not a uh, quarter inch, it's a three eight, three eighth inch. And if you use one of these, it grabs the nut of the Schrader valve really nicely, takes it out. And then your Schrader valve um, pops right out. And this is actually a really great example of one that needs to be changed. And the reason why you could tell is because uh, the Schrader valve seal right here is white and deteriorated. This is the color uh, that it turns when it's at like the end of its life. So this is actually a really good example. Um, all you're going to do is just swap this out. Again, same way as the uh, LPR. It's going to take just a um, 006 uh, 90 durometer o-ring I'm just gonna slide one on here um, if you want to change the uh, o-ring on the nut uh, that's a 0 10 and now this thing is rebuilt screws in the same way it came out tighten it up and you're in the game um, so this is the most important part of the uh, reg. Um, keeping this in good shape uh, will really help just keep the uh, regulator working forever. And you can even see if you look closely in there, there's little dust particles that are actually little pieces of that Schrader valve seal uh, that had kind of uh, worn off from just like deterioration, um, which is why it's so important to keep those seals in good shape. Um, so remember, you can always use a uh, 90 durometer 006 O-ring. Um, now to clean out and maintain the rest of the regulator, you really only have one part uh, to worry about here, and that's your regulator piston. So you just want to grab the, uh, the tip of it with your needle nose pliers. Comes right out. This one also not in great shape. So what you're going to do is um, you're just going to clean it with a uh, rag, maybe replace it. This takes a 113 Buna 70 durometer O-ring. Um, and you want to keep that in good shape because otherwise, same as your LPR, what can end up happening is when the uh, O-ring wears too much, it actually uh, causes the piston to rub against the inside. Um, and that can cause you some longer term issues in terms of uh, pressure not staying where it's uh, set at can cause regulator creep. It's just not good for it overall. Uh, so yeah, when I uh, whenever I rebuild a marker, I'm usually replacing that O-ring. I recommend you do the same. And then uh, for the rest of it, you're just going to want to, this, this literally slides right out. This is two pieces. This is your high pressure regulator spring. You'll notice it's a lot bigger and thicker than what we saw in the uh, Gen 3 LPR. Um, in a Gen 2 LPR, it's going to look really similar. And it's really easy to get the two springs mixed up. The uh, telltale way to see which uh, spring belongs in what, if you compare the two, the uh, high pressure regulator uh, spring is going to be a lot thicker than the low pressure regulator spring uh, to make it a little easier. And then uh, the last thing you're going to do here is you're just going to run a rag on the inside of it, clean that all up. 
Um, you might even want to do the same with your spring and the adjuster plate right here. Um, for reassembly, the adjuster plate is the first part to go in. And then the spring follows it. Um, I put them in dry. I never lube up the springs. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, you'll notice that I don't, the only part that you really want to go heavy on the lube with is uh, on the uh, O-ring right here. And you don't even have to go that heavy, just a light uh, layer to coat it. And then that goes right in. And then I'm just going to screw both halves back together. And you're in business. Uh, this thing's rebuilt. Again, for a uh, Gen 1 and Gen 2 um, high pressure um, regulator, you want it set to a starting pressure of around 230 PSI. For a Gen 3 and a Gen 4, 200 PSI is a good place to start. Thanks, guys, and uh, let's hope uh, our guns stay working forever. Take care.